Hey, what's going on guys? My name is Shane. For those who are new, welcome back. If you're returning, I want to preface today's video by saying that I am not a true crime expert. I am a true Oh my god. I am a true crime fan. Please take everything I say as a speculation, opinion, or allegation unless it has been proven otherwise in the court of law. I don't want to be sued. A jury found Wade Wilson guilty for the deaths of two women, 35-year-old Christine Melton and 43-year-old Diane Ruiz. The jury returned with a recommendation for the death sentence for the two murders. Melton was found dead in her Cape Coral home on October 7th, 2000. 2019. There's a fly that's gonna die tonight. That same Tuesday, Ruiz happened to be walking to work where she worked as a bartender at the Moose Lodge on Santa Barbara Boulevard. And her body was discovered about three days later, only about a half a mile from her home in a field behind a Sam's Club. In November of 2019, Wilson was indicted on two charges, including two counts of first degree premeditated murder. Earlier today, the jury recommended that he gets the death penalty. Wade Wilson is convicted of murdering two women by strangulation. People theorize the hand signals Wilson does in court shown in that TikTok may just indicate that him fantasizing about wanting to cause harm to the court officials or juror. Although we'll learn later that his tattoos have some affiliations, I don't believe he was throwing any particular hand gestures. This case really began in 2019 when police responded to a call about a domestic dispute. Wilson, then 25, was arrested after witnesses testified his attacks on his then-girlfriend Kelly Matthews in front of her business. Soon after his arrest, he actually became the prime suspect for the murders of Melton and Ruiz. A quote I found from Kelly Matthews reads, He told me he could either knock me out and tie me to a tree or he could tie me up in my car. So obviously, I didn't want him to hit my face. But he ended up hitting me in the face anyway, splitting my lip open. He tied me up in the back of my car, shoved me with laundry so no one could see me, and ended up driving me all the way to the Keys. And if you're unfamiliar with the state of Florida, when they say the Keys, I'm assuming they're talking about Key West, which is on the southernmost point of Florida near Mexico. The following month after his arrest, a grand jury indicted Wilson on two counts of battery, one count of burglary, and one count of petty theft. In 2022, Wilson's trial began with a disposition report. Wilson himself pleaded not guilty to the murders, but actually his father, Daddy may have dropped the bombshell. All I'm gonna say is be careful of who you tell what to because his father ended up testifying that Wilson confided in him and basically told his dad every gruesome detail about the murders. Wilson's father is seen here quoting, he said that he went to some bar, met a girl, and went home with her. That they hung out for a while, went to sleep, and he got on top of her and choked her until she died. He goes on to say, he said he stayed in the house through the night and he took her body and rolled it up in a rug. He was going to try to put her in his car, but she was too heavy, so he left the scene. According to Newsweek, although he found Ruiz walking down the road on her way to work, he met Melton at a live music bar and had gone home with her. Wilson told his father that he left the victim's house that day in her car, started driving down the road, and that's when he spotted Ruiz. He claimed he stopped his vehicle when Ruiz asked him for directions, and that's when she got into his car. As he was driving, he reaches over with one hand and begins choking her. Once he thinks she's dead, he pulls over to dispose of her body and to his dismay she's still alive. Uh, uh, he didn't like that very much and decided to run her over with his car. After that is when he moves her body. And now I'm just curious but why she asked for directions. Now this is his story. She's obviously not here to testify but if she was on her way to work I'd assume this is a route she travels often. I don't know her normal transportation mode. I don't know if she usually drives and just on this particular day she wanted to go for a walk or had to go for a walk. I don't know the circumstance. However, I think it's a little bit weird if you're on your way to work why would you need directions? Of course, if you genuinely don't know where you are, but 
That just struck a little bit odd to me, and coming from Wilson himself, I don't trust that story. To me, it sounds more like a forced kidnapping, which I don't think he would openly admit to. I think he would try to diminish it a little, saying, oh, she stopped, that's the whole reason. I I don't know. I think it, he, I think it was a little more forceful, because to me, if you got this woman in your car and had plans on unaliving her later on, wouldn't you drive to uh, another location and pull over, basically get a good grip around her neck and then commit the act like why would you do it while driving unless maybe she was struggling I think it'd make more sense to be more like a kidnapping situation and she was struggling and he felt while driving he needed to subdue her and try choking her and maybe just had her like sort of pass out or black out but obviously not quite dead but then he does what he does and Pretty sick guy. Wilson's stepmother overhears this conversation between her stepson and her husband and goes right to detectives. <laughs> Once a detective was alerted of what she had heard, Wilson was then arrested. Wilson's father has admitted that his son has already been to jail once and that he's currently a struggling rug addict. Obviously, you can see that Wilson is covered in tattoos. If you want to learn a little bit more about what's on his body and what they say, Creepy History Class on TikTok did a great video. I'll play for you now. Okay, tattoo tour of Wade Wilson's face and neck and the meanings behind them. Also, did he get permission to cover them up during the trial? Let's start with the front of his neck, right there. On the front of his neck, it says bread for war. Pretty self-explanatory, but also on his neck, you're gonna see some numbers. They're a little difficult to see, but on the right side of his neck, which is the side we're looking at right now, is gonna be one four. Then on the other side of his neck, which you could see down here, are gonna be the numbers eight eight. You can see them right over there. So the numbers 1488 are a white supremacist thing commonly used by Nazi inmates, extremist gangs in jail. I don't want to say exactly what the numbers stand for, but it's not good. Now I want to go over to the left side of his face. Now right here, the letters NMM, that's the most difficult one to decipher. Okay, so we'll go with one of two options. First one, non-metallic metal. It's a painting technique used on non-metallic things and it creates the illusion of metal. Artists control where reflections are and what is reflected. I don't know if he's that deep, but psh, maybe. Other option would be No Mercy Mafia. There is a Texas Mexican Mafia that uses NMM as well, but I don't think that would be an appropriate interpretation in this situation. Next, we're gonna be looking at the words down here. It says, why so serious? And then ha 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 underneath it. There's also a drawing of a translucent skeletal figure next to it. I mean, that thing right there. This is really zoomed in, but maybe you can see everything better. So Why So Serious is a famous quote from the 2008 Joker movie. There's definitely some Joker themes thrown in there with the most obvious, I think, being the smile. And that line in the movie was followed by this line. Sticks the blade in my mouth, let's put a smile on that face. Which would explain this situation down here. We got the new smiley face with the stitches. There's clearly a Joker theme going on here. Let's go to the other side of his face. Up on the very top here, you will see the letters TTG. That stands for trained to go. Not to the bathroom like potty trained. This stands for ready to fight at any moment. There is also a gang that goes by that name. Is he a part of it? I don't know. Then right on his temple, we see the word glory. You know, honor won by notable achievements. Mm-hmm, mm, I don't know. Then by his right ear, right over there, are the words out of sight. <laughs> Next we have a swastika on his face. That's why I don't know about the TTG thing because he's definitely part of some supremacist stuff in jail, behind bars. And that's not his only swastika. No, no, there's a bigger one. There it is. Okay, so did he get permission to cover them up during his trial? There was a pre-trial motion that his lawyers put forth, and this stated that he wanted to cover numerous and various tattoos, particularly on his face, with makeup, because he understood that some of these tattoos might be offensive to some people in the jury. There was also a motion for him to be able to wear a suit and tie, that way he can look more presentable to the jury. And yes, all of those were granted, so he was able to cover his tattoos up during trial. Or at least he was given the makeup to be able to do so. So I mean, what happened? Because clearly they were still visible during trial. Two things, either he changed his mind about it last minute, or cover up was provided and just not adequate enough. 
Some people were saying that they do look a little lighter during the trial, so it is possible that he tried to cover them up and it just didn't work. Or maybe not. Maybe maybe he just changed his mind. Maybe he just changed his mind about the whole thing. It is kind of fascinating. Um, I don't know for sure what he decided to do with the makeup or not, um, or use it or not. It was just really a sheer coverage, but... I did read somewhere that he decided not to use it and it's interesting that he would even think of it maybe as a technique to sort of get the jurors to feel bad or more so on your side to cover up maybe some of the uh, insensitive tattoos that some of the jurors may find offensive and kind of bias their opinion one way or the other. So I thought that was really interesting to include as well. And, and it's fascinating that his uh, request was granted. but. At least from what we can see, it doesn't look like it was really attempted. State of Florida first Wade Wilson. We, the jury, finds as follows as to the defendant, Wade Wilson, in this case. As to count one, first degree murder, Christine Milton. We, the jury, unanimously find that this state has established beyond a reasonable doubt that Wade Wilson was previously convicted of a felony and under sentence of imprisonment or placed on community control or on felony pro probation. We, the jury, find unanimously that the state has established beyond a reasonable doubt that Wade Wilson was previously convicted of another capital felony or of a felony involving the use of threat of violence to the person. We, the jury, unanimously find that the state has established beyond a reasonable doubt that the first degree murder was committed in a cold, calculated, and premeditated manner without any pretense of moral or legal justification. We have further considered whether Wade Wilson should be sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole or death. We, the jury, find by a vote of 9 to 3 that Wade Wilson should be sentenced to death. We, the jury, unanimously find that the state has established beyond a reasonable doubt that Wade Wilson was previously convicted of another capital felony or of a felony involving the use of threat of violence to the person. We, the jury, unanimously find that the state has established beyond a reasonable doubt that the first degree murder was committed in a cold, calculated, and premeditated murder manner without any pretense of moral or legal justification. If eight or more jurors vote for the death penalty, your recommendation must be for the death penalty. We, the jury, unanimously found the state proved one or more aggravating factors. Each of us has considered whether one or more migrating circumstances exist. Each of us has weighed whether the proven aggravating factors are sufficient and whether the proven aggravating factors outweigh any proven migrating circumstances. We have further considered whether Wade Wilson should be sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole or death. We, the jury, find by a vote of 10 to 2 that Wade Wilson should be sentenced to death. Dated this 25th day of June, 2024, in Lee County, Florida, four-person Newsweek reports that Melton was a cat lover and a great friend during the trial. A high school friend named Stephanie Sailors, who is 41, testified that she and Melton lived in Colorado before moving to Cape Coral together, and they were servers at the same restaurant. So it seems like both our victims were servers at restaurants. I wonder if that has any correlation between them, why, why they were specifically chosen, because it has been determined that these murders were premeditated. Christine will never experience motherhood, a role she was born to play, Milton's cousin Samantha quotes. On the other hand, our other victim was a mother already. Ruiz was the mother of two sons named Brandon... Coulier, 29, and Zane Romero, 19. Romero was about to make his debut in the high school marching band just a few days before his mother's death. Or did you know a young lady by the name of Diana Ruiz? Yes, that was my mom. Is there anything that you would like for the jury to consider um, here today as it relates to this matter? Um, I wrote a letter. My name is Zay Romero. I'm a 19-year-old college student going for my bachelor's degree in graphic design. I'm Diane Ruiz's youngest child. 
I won't, I was only 14 years old when she passed. Just starting my freshman year of high school, she was so excited um, to see me grow up. And so proud of what I was growing into. She supported me in all my dreams and only tried to help and uplift me when taking on new risks and challenges. My father unfortunately passed away when I was only 11 years old. My mother was all I had left. I was barely two months into my first year of high school when she passed away. I was in marching band in the week prior. She was telling me how excited she was to go and watch me perform at that weekend's football game. Um, she would have been her first time seeing me perform. I never got to see her in the crowd, Romero said. My mom will never get to see me get married. Ruiz's co-workers also state that she never missed a shift in the five years that she worked there. So again, my theory about her walking to work and needing directions, I don't know. Now, if, you, if you're going to the same place for five years, Mm. So what happens now that 9 to 3 of the jurors have ruled in favor of the death penalty? Well, there's a hearing scheduled for July 23rd where arguments and testimonies and statements are going to be made and heard from the judge. At that point, the judge is going to consider their recommendations, but ultimately he will be the decider of the penalty. Unless more victims like Kelly come forward, we might have to wait until July 23rd to hear anything more about the case. Personally, I can't imagine the only victims being the three women named in this story. We'll come back after the trial in July with further details, but for now let me know what other cases you think I should cover and I'll see you in my next one.